Hi, this is Katherine Jane from Trending Lightly. The holidays are hectic. On top of work and managing your everyday to-do list, adding the chore of getting ready for a last minute holiday party can take the fun out of, well, the holidays. Today, with the help of a few friends, we are going to show you how easy it is to look stunning. This is your holiday makeover. First, we're gonna take Lisa to J. Rowan Salon on Sutter Street in San Francisco to have her hair cut and colored. Then Audrey Musgrave is going to do her makeup, and then I will do her styling and make some suggestions on what you can wear for the holidays. Hi, I'm here with Lisa today. Lisa has agreed to be our model. Thank you, Lisa, for doing this. I know this is really putting you on the spot. I asked Lisa here to take part in this video because Lisa is like a lot of women. She's busy. She's a full-time job, she's a single parent, and she doesn't have a lot of time to, to take care of herself during the day or to think about what she needs to do. So, Lisa, are you ready for your makeover? Yes. Let's do this, come Let's on. Out. <laughs> Our first stop today is at J. Roland Salon on Sutter Street in San Francisco. I'm here with Roland, who is gonna do Lisa's cut, and Emily is gonna do Lisa's color. Hi, I'm Roland, and I'm the owner of J. Roland Salon and I'm going to do Lisa's makeover today. So we've decided that based on Lisa's lifestyle uh, and maintenance requests that we're actually going to keep the shape quite long, um, but really talk about reducing a lot of weight and a lot of bulk in Lisa's hair uh, to create a shape that works for her face shape, the maintenance that she's considering, um, as well as in the salon. And then... From J. Rowland Salon, I will be doing her hair color today. When I was first introduced to her, I noticed that she didn't really have enough warmth throughout the ends of her hair. So we are going to work with a nice, warm, rich brown through her outgrowth and color balance with a uh, warm brown, slight red reflection through the ends of her hair to just really play off her brown eyes. She has a nice skin tone. And just when you have curly hair, it's so important that it's shiny. Shine, shine, shine is so important for any hair color, especially when you're working with brunettes. You would need that shine and that richness. Is the hair ever shampooed after this? I do shampoo, I rinse the color, I shampoo, and then we do the gloss. So you must do a special shampoo because you just put color on, right? I do use a color protect shampoo, absolutely. Oh, okay. Because color protect shampoos are low in oxidants, uh -huh. which reactivate the color's eye molecules, causing them to fade out of the hair faster uh -huh. and change tone. Nice. And can you get products like that in like regular stores or do you have to go to salons? I would recommend going to a salon because it's more concentrated. Okay. Um, at home or Walgreens shampoos tend to have more fillers. Okay. And the good stuff is more diluted. Okay. Then this is all very concentrated. The shampoo, you don't even need that much of it. I always say add more water before you add more shampoo. Oh. We're here for part two of our makeover. Um, this is Audrey Musgrave, who is gonna do Lisa's makeup. Ladies, have at it. First, we're gonna moisturize the skin. This is my favorite product, Embroidely. And then I like to apply on top of that a tinted moisturizer so the skin stays really, really hydrated throughout the day. Next, I'm gonna use a concealer to spot, conceal any extra redness or blemishes that we want to hide. Next I'm going to use a translucent setting powder. This will mattify any shine that you might have on your face and it will help your makeup last all day. Next we're going to apply a shimmery neutral shade. This will really help your eyes pop. And next we're going to define the crease. So take a matte shade. I'm going to take this brownish color right here. Tap off your brush. 
you can always lift your own eyelid here and just apply it right in that crease. Next I'm going to do eyeliner. This can be tricky for some people, but it's actually really easy. I'm using an, an eye pencil from MAC Cosmetics, and what I like to do is first pull the eye out to the side a little bit, and this is great and easy trick to do at home. Close your eye, and then just run it across in little dabs. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to smudge it out later. And when you're picking an eye, an eye color pencil, I like to do anything but black. Black can be a little bit harsh, especially as we age. So grays, browns, greens, purples, blues are a really good alternative. I'm going to take an angle brush and just smudge that line. Now we're moving on to eyelashes. Heat up your eyelash curler for three seconds with your hair dryer before you start. And now I'm applying mascara. Always swirl your wand inside the tube, never pump it. That will get more air into the tube and it will cause more bacteria and it to dry out faster. And I'm going to wiggle the wand back and forth between her eyelashes. Next, moving on to eyebrows. It depends on your own eyebrow shape. Sometimes you might want to redefine it with a simple angle brush and a powder that matches your eyebrow. For Lisa, I'm just going to use a tinted one to sort of enhance the color of her eyebrows. Okay, now we're moving on to blush. I like to use a pink color. It's youthful, it's fresh, and it looks good on every skin tone. Apply it to the apples of the cheeks and then back just a little bit. So next we're going to move on to lips. I either like to use a lip liner and color in the whole lip or use a matte lipstick shade. Matte lipsticks and lip liners stay on really long. And on top, I'm going to apply a glossier sort of lipstick. And there you have it. Our last step in the makeover is styling. I thought it would be fun to put Lisa in outfits that everyone might already have in their wardrobe. Now, two essential pieces that I think we should all have on our wardrobe is a black skirt and a white tailored shirt. The first outfit I'm going to put on Lisa is a printed blouse with the black skirt. So what I've done with this outfit is I've added a belt to bring in the waist, gold chains, and then a, a heel, a nice black heel, um, and it pulls it all together and Lisa's ready for her party. If you don't have a print shirt to wear with your black skirt, try it with a jewel tone top. So what I've done with this, which is much easier if you don't have a black belt, jewel tone top, I added a necklace and she's ready to go. All right, our next outfit, everyone's got a tailored white shirt. We're going to pair it with a full skirt. Okay, here it is. White tailored shirt, full skirt, pearls. Now the great thing about, or the easy thing about pulling this together even more is bringing in a pair of red shoes. Red shoes with black and white make it all come together. And Lisa's ready for another holiday party. Now sometimes you might have something in your spring wardrobe that you can bring out and wear uh, in the fall or winter. I have this red skirt, it's a spring skirt, but when you pair it with a black top and a pair of black heels, it works really well for a holiday party. Okay, last outfit, here it is. A spring skirt with a black top, I changed the pearls to gray pearls. You can wear pretty much any other cluster necklace you might have. And then we put on, on the bottom, on the feet, we have something um, a little bit more pointed and stiletto, but a low enough heel that she can dance all night long. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you have any comments to make, we'd love to hear from you. Eat well, laugh a lot, and be chic. Happy holidays.